Uvalde Radio.net, it's Robert Miguel checking in live from the Uvalde Area Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. Uh, and uh, we are getting ready for the Chamber of Commerce ribbon cutting ceremony. I'm here with the director of the chamber, Mr. John Yakel. Now, John, this will be our first interview together. Uh, before we get into, uh, you know, uh, what's going on at the chamber, let's go and talk about your personal journey, education, uh, career, how you landed here in Uvalde, Texas. Sure. I, I was a military brat and lived all over the country. Uh, spent my last two years of high school in Del Rio. Went to a university at Southwestern University in Georgetown, Texas. After college, didn't know what I wanted to do. I was a police officer in New Mexico, in Hobbs, New Mexico, for a few years. And then in 1996, bought in a, a sweat equity, 25% stake in our first business, which was the Golden Chick here that we had for 25 years until we sold back last September. Wow. So basically, back last September, I decided to sell my business, attempt early retirement. And uh, after about 90 days, my wife decided that I needed to find something to do. I was getting on her nerves. Now, you seem pretty young. I mean, that's pretty early retirement. Yeah. So my grandfather <laughs> retired at 46, lived to 93 and never worked another day in his life and wow. enjoyed all of it. And I always thought that that's what I wanted. Very cool. And uh, it took about three or four months. I figured out, no, that, that was a little too early. A little too crazy. Right. So I'll be 50 in December and, you know, maybe five years from now, we'll look at it again. See whether whether early retirement is still in the cards for Well, it me. must be nice to have the option is all I'm saying. It did. <laughs> it, it makes a difference when you're not working by necessity. So, so for those of us who would love to have an early retirement, what's the key to have that option? Just working hard and just working hard, being frugal, putting mm -hmm. money away for a rainy day, and uh, trying to get your kids through college before you pull the plug. <laughs> nice. Well, that's some great advice right there. So, but uh, so uh, go ahead and talk about Golden Chick. Uh, twenty five years here in town. Yeah. So it was roughly a little over twenty five years. So we opened in uh, the spring of ninety six. And I sold in September of uh, 2021. Now, you guys managed to be uh, huge uh, supporters of, of school and all kinds of uh, local events and whatnot here. What was your experience like overall? Well, we generally, our philosophy was instead of spending money on coupons and ads, we spent our money on direct givebacks. Mm -hmm. So whether that was product or dollars, putting them back into largely community and, and kid events. You know, and it was one of those things when you put good out, good comes back to you. Right, right. Yeah, so very fantastic. So uh, took a break out of, out of supposed early retirement. <laughs> what brought you back and what, what made you land here at the, at the chamber? Well, coming back is because the wife decided that I was getting on her nerves and I need to find <laughs> something to do. And the second part of it was I, I like fixer-uppers. So, uh -huh. you know, the chamber had had some struggles. The Convention and Visitor Bureau had struggles. Decades passed when I served on the city council. I never could understand why the two entities weren't one and the same to begin with, hmm. since so many of their responsibilities were so similar and cohesive. So when the opportunity presented itself to take on the chamber, I thought, just my personal opinion, that it was something that I wanted to see come to fruition. We put together a bid, and we were very fortunate that the city gave us the opportunity to, to expand on that opportunity and, and see what we could do with it. Now, you definitely hit the ground running because you had not been with the chamber very long, and then you guys basically um, assumed control of the, the Visitors Bureau as well, too. That must have been a whole lot of red tape in, in, a real, in a fast, furious way, right? Right. So we took over. I took the keys January 3rd. Stole uh, MJ Miller from the school district to come help me. It's a good steal. It was a fantastic <laughs> hire. And the two of us basically had a plan that in six months we wanted to make a run at putting a contract for the hot tax. And only during that period did we even come to know that there had been a 13-month window that there hadn't been a contract. Mm -hmm. That was something that I had never spent any time or attention to because prior to September I had not given much thought to selling my business or what I would do post-business. So we were very fortunate that we made a successful pitch, and I believe going forward, the community will see the value of our merger. Now, for those who don't know hot tax and how that works, right. go ahead and give us a quick uh, explanation. So hot right. tax essentially is the hotel motel tax that is levied on those who visit us and, and patronize our hotels and motels. And those dollars theoretically are used to promote the community and, and bring additional heads in bed. So my, my view was is that CVB function, the chamber function, can be cohesive because the Visitors Bureau helps to bring people here, spend the night, spend their dollars, and while they're here, spend their dollars in our businesses. So that's why we felt that the two working together could have more capacity 
and more value as one single entity. Now, it seems like you've already done a lot in a very short amount of time. Uh, we're here actually uh, preparing for the ribbon cutting, which is kind of interesting because the chamber typically hosts ribbon cutting right. and kind of the irony of you kind of hosting your own. Um, how exciting is this for you to be kind of uh, introducing the community to your, to your new home? Well, and it's like we've tried to explain to our, our staff is that things will not always be this eventful or this exciting, that we got a lot of momentum early. We had some very ambitious goals and benchmarks and literally the six month mark was our target and we did exactly that so that on the six month we've completed our business at the chamber we were taking on our our new opportunity from our vision board if you will right right you know i think coming out of the private sector we move at a lot quicker speed than does typically your local or state government yeah bureaucrats and, I think, and, what? <laughs> and I think to a large extent our approach was so aggressive but so put together that opportunity and timing that you can't always control mm -hmm. worked in our favor to where we were at the right place at the right time with the right vision. You know, time will tell and, and it'll be our judge, but we feel confident that we'll meet the challenge. Well, it seems like you're doing a great job so far. So again, we've got uh, John Yakel here, the director of the Uvalde Area Chamber of Commerce, also the Visitor Center. We're getting ready for the ribbon cutting uh, this afternoon. It's a big week in Uvalde, Palomino Fest. Uh, we've got uh, school starting here pretty soon. You've got a whole lot going on. How has it been for you and your staff? If you will, uh, give, me, give me a little background on who you've got under your wings. Right, so our office. first edition was MJ Miller, who mm -hmm. we took from from the school district and was probably our number one hire by far. We were fortunate enough to add Adam Ocasio, who had been at the city and most recently at the county. And with the consent of Wendy Spears at the Fairplex, we were able to bring Adam on board with our staff. He's a solid guy too. So. Absolutely. Yeah, and then good. our final addition was Olga Charles that we brought in as our community liaison because we felt like she was the perfect. We have an unusual group of folks that probably no one would have ever imagined mm -hmm. as, as a cohesive team. But I've found that you need to identify your weaknesses and your strengths and then augment your, your staff based on those needs, you know, and I, so far, so good. I, I just from my perspective from the outside, it looks like you've got a really great combination of kind of elder statesmen and kind of newcomers, you know, kind of uh, movers and shakers. So I, I think you're right. I mean, a we go we go from folks who for me are are literally the same age as my children from 26 at our youngest staff member. Yeah. To those in retirement age. And, and so you, and everything those, in between. You need those points of view as well, too, don't you think? Right, because it gives us three generations deep worth of perspective on whatever we're doing. Well, very good. So what is the plan here for the ribbon cutting here uh, today? You've invited the community. Uh, what do you expect? Uh, how is it going to go down? We're just hoping to have people come by, see what we're doing, get excited about what we're doing, see with a few dollars the change visually we've made here, and we feel like that we can convey that into real change day-to-day -day in our community by demonstrating every day what we're trying to do to be of value and of, of relevance in the community. If you could give me kind of a quick hit list, um, what, are the, uh, what are the major changes, improvements, I guess, uh, that you would say that you're offering? Right. The new so management? I think number one, customer service, coming out of a service industry, making sure that when you walk into our, our office space, you're greeted immediately upon entry. You make eye contact immediately. That even if the questions asked of us have nothing to do with what we do, We'll help you find those answers or, put, or send you in the right direction. We uh, extend our hours to operate on Saturdays because we're a visitor center. When do visitors come? Saturday. I got to say, let me interject real quick. Just driving by on Saturday and the weekends and seeing action, seeing activity here, it, it's actually very pleasing for, a, for a, a guy in the community like myself. Right. Because you're right, you know, um, people tend to visit on the weekends and a visitor right. center should be I available. Think just yeah. in general, I think many non-private entities – whether they're governmental, nonprofit, tend to think of their services being offered on what's convenient to them mm -hmm. rather than what's convenient to their end user right. or in layman's terms, their customer. Yeah. Know where your customer is and you got to meet them there. Mm -hmm. And that isn't always as convenient as you'd like it to be for your work schedule, but that's the nature of it. So we're looking forward to having a fantastic parade this weekend, weather permitting. We've got uh, nearly 70 plus entries as well as a large contingent of horse mounted. So we're looking forward to having Border Patrol, DPS, the Palomino Riders from San Antonio Riders, or San Antonio Rodeo. We're looking forward to having the Cactus Trail Riders that are a local group add on to those folks. So we want to make a, a big deal of our 1972 state champs. They are, as a group, our parade marshal. You know, we want to be encouraging people to, to show up out there for the game and support the Coyotes. I think specific to us is in addition to showcasing our, our space, 
you know, adding some more visibility by having our, our, our kind of our Wednesday pigskin pick revival here on Chamber Picks. The prediction show, On the yeah. prediction show, we want to kind of meld – Folks who were on that show in the previous years and bringing some new voices and in the people community. have been clamoring for, for the return of something like right. that for years around here. Yeah, we just we just need to be able to accentuate all the great things about our community. We've mm-hmm. all had enough negative, as you know, yeah. there's enough negativity to go around, and there's a proper place for that. But we also need to remind ourselves about how much good is in our community oh, sure. and how much we have in common. Now, as it goes specifically to tourism, one of the biggest things we're excited about is adding a shuttle this spring break and summer. We got a late start. With the, with the kind of halfway through summer transition to taking over the space and the contract, we're looking forward to being prepared this fall to be able to market in the spring a full-blown free shuttle that runs from Uvalde to Concan back and forth with a shared expense, not just our local hot tax paying for it, but sharing that with the county's hot tax provider and even extending that to the workforce solutions because we want to use that same shuttle system to take our visitors from here and our hotels to the river and those folks at the river to come shop in our community. But we also want to take employees from our community looking for work to find reliable transportation to the employers who need them on a seasonal basis. And by doing so, we can share not by half, but by a third of the overall cost and maybe de facto create a year round shuttle system with a little more restrictive office that will provide a lasting service through the community year round. Now, if I may put a button on that, that's a, uh, it's, it's a novel idea, but it seems like it should be kind of obvious because what, what we want is we have all these tourists coming through the county, but not necessarily the city. And they could be spending their bucks here in, in Uvalde right. proper instead of at the cabins and, and all the shops uh, in Concan and whatnot. So, and I, I, don't think it was, I don't think it was that we're the only ones that ever had the idea. I think the difference was is that never, no one ever followed through right. and proposed a tenable option. When I sat on, sat on city council years ago, we never made a transition from whatever frustration we might have had at that given time, which was a totally sif- separate administration that, that, than the one we replaced at Convention and Visitors Bureau. The same frustration was there of how can we be more proactive and creative and innovative, but we never, no one ever presented an alternative option. Right. And I feel like the only reason that this transition took place is because we created an alternative option. I, I think that there's, um, as a community in the past, we have been guilty of having great ideas, but never connecting the dots, never do the follow through. And that you need the follow through. Otherwise, it's just... Well, know. the other part is realizing that none of us individually have all the answers and none of us individually can do everything right that it has to be a more collaborative environment sure. where we seek out the common benefit to the community and then work towards that put our egos aside and figure out what's the problem what are some solutions and how do we get there together and so we're hoping that at the chamber we can demonstrate though it was a rocky start for the status quo that we can be a viable alternative way of doing things. Well, again, we got John here, the director of the Uvalde Area Chamber of Commerce. The natives are getting restless. We're about to kick off your uh, your big, uh, I guess you're having like a... a, We're basically just having a a re-grand opening and our our first little mixer to show people that the the chamber is back and it's relevant and it can provide value to you. Where maybe in the years past, it might have been more difficult for me as a long-term member. There had been many years that I felt as though I had a difficult time being able to articulate what value I got from that membership. Interesting. And it had been up and down, depending on who the chamber director was at the time and who the board was, in fairness to those directors, who made up their board. Right. Because a director can only be as good as the board that, that he is working for. You know? And so we feel like at this opportunity, we actually have one of the best boards we've ever had. we got a lot of new blood on our board. It's more, much more, I would say, much more representative of our community than it has been in the past. Hmm which is crucial, I believe. And I think our staff is much more representative, both both in the mix of our community's makeup, but also in age and experience. Now, as we wrap it up, one final thought uh, for those individuals or businesses who would like to uh, become a chamber member that aren't, uh, give us a quick rundown on how that how to Right, so first of all, the easy one, uvalde, uvalde.org, visit us there. All the documentation, all your questions are available with easy easy access to information on our website at uvalde.org. Number two, call us at 830-278-3361. So that's 830-278-3361. Or stop by and visit us at 300 East Main. We're happy to reach out and help you in any way we can. And that's going to wrap it up here. We are uvalderadio.net live at the Uvalde Area Chamber of Commerce.